Hey everybody, welcome to Unknown Room episode six. And today I'm joined by a strawweight contender, Tatiana Suarez. Tatiana, how are you? I'm doing well. Thank you. How are you? Uh, I'm all right. Uh, times are fine. Um, and <laughs> <laughs> so on June 8th, you'll be taking on oh, Nita Ansaroff at UFC 238. Um, what are your initial thoughts about that, just right off the bat? Um, I'm just really excited to have a matchup. I know after Carla, you know, it was it was difficult for me to get a matchup because I heard some people were turning down some fights. And, um, you know, I guess it was just difficult. Basically, McMaynard said, you know, um, my success in the octagon has made it a little bit more difficult for me to get fights. So it was a little, you know, um, so when I got the actual matchup, I was really excited, especially because um, I had been waiting for so long and I had been asking and I even told them, I was like, I will fight at 125. I don't really care um, just to get a fight in, you know, um, <clears throat> but um, but yeah, once they got that, I was really excited. And now I'm really excited. Just, I'm, I'm what, a li little less than, you know, three weeks or I think it's like three more weeks, two more weeks after this of more of hard work. And then, um, and then I have my fight. So I'm really, really excited. And I just, I, I can't wait to actually get out there and do it. I told my, like my coach yesterday, I was like, man, I can fight today. Get me in there. Put me in UFC Rochester. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, obviously that's not going to happen. <laughs> and it's so funny you mentioned that. Cause I remember reading um, headlines a while back. It was a couple months ago and Dana White literally said, quote, he said, listen to me. We're in matchmaking meetings every Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Now nobody will fight her. Everyone is turning her down. That's, that's what Dana said. So I was like, I wonder if like, girls are really not trying to get in there with you but uh we fast forward to now and then here's the matchup with nina um, right did they ever tell you like um did they ever tell you like any options for you as far yeah. as girls that maybe wanted to fight you at 125 or something like that when you were really itching to get in there no they were like we want you to be you know um we believe you're the next title contender um so we want you to be at 115 and i was like okay and i just wanted to get in there because i just wanted to fight i just wanted to i just wanted to maul somebody i was getting <laughs> <laughs> i was getting the itch you know <laughs> especially coming off of a dominant fight where you know i didn't take it little to zero damage you know um the only thing that really hurt was my elbows and that's pretty much it and my knees were a little bit like bruised up from the shooting and being on the canvas that canvas rips your legs up so i definitely come out with like some bad like br burns and stuff like that but other than that like i was fine i was good to go i was training on monday um right back to strength training and um trying to get better and stronger and i've noticed the difference because like because i s never stopped doing the weight training and the cardio and stuff like that like i've noticed a difference in my body composition i'm a lot leaner um, and I do think I put on some more muscle. So, um, you know, I think I'll be an even stronger version of myself. And, you know, I just, I just can't wait to get in there and actually fight. <clears throat> but they did give me some um, matchups at 115. They asked Joanna, but at the time she wasn't ready. She was out doing, I don't know what she was doing. I think she was just traveling. And then um, the karate hottie, she supposedly, she'd said no, but then she had a fight with, uh, she got the fight with Carolina like a couple weeks later. So, <clears throat> but you never know. Like, I don't, I never say, like, you know, like to me, like she might have turned it down or maybe she's just like, I don't want that matchup because, but honestly, I think it was because it was, I was a tougher matchup than Carolina. And yeah, probably because uh, Carolina is more of a striker and your style is something right now that uh, no one else really brings to the table at 115. And actually, no one really else in the UFC. I mean, there's a few names and there's people that you get compared to often. Um, but I think that people are s slowly starting to realize that like chain wrestling is like the secret to like dominant performances in MMA yeah. right now. And I think that, um, I know you said you wanted to just get in there and maul some girls, but um, yeah. I remember um, uh, going back, um, I've seen things where, you know, everyone knows you've been wrestling since you were three years old. 
But um, take me back to your wrestling days in high school, uh, college. Like, what was that like? Because I know you used to maul people then, too. <laughs> yeah, you know, I was really, really competitive. And by the time I was in high school, it was really, really, it was really serious to me. It wasn't like some, just something of recreational. Um, it was something I really, uh, I've set forth goals. I sacrificed a lot of things. I didn't go out. I traveled a lot. I went uh, to camps. Um, I, I wrestled year round. I didn't just wrestle during the season. I yes, I wrestled year round, and I went to camps during the summer, and I went to multiple tournaments, uh, including nationals and stuff like that, throughout my high school career. And I just remember, you know, getting better each year, and all these competitions led to, you know, how I am today. I don't really. Uh, feel the pressure from the lights. I don't really get nervous as much. Um, and um, I just kind of look at everything like, you know what, this is like if it's if I was just sparring at the gym, you know, um, I'll figure it out and, you know, I'll figure out a way to win. So, um, yeah, I just, uh, I really loved wrestling. I started wrestling at the age of three. And then um, I grew, you know, I, I, I went all the, all the way through the youth um youth and high school wrestling boys even in college i was wrestling guys and um i was wrestling like the the starter for the college team and i was beating him and they were like oh my god she could be our starter like for college and i was like i was like yeah but at the time i was trying to be an olympian so i wasn't really focused on you know trying to be like you know college wrestler at the time i just wanted to you know go to the, go to the olympics and um, being an Olympic champion. That was my goal at the time. So <clears throat> fast forward, I won multiple world medals and um, world titles and um, just a bunch of like opens that they have, like the Clippin Open, um, the France Open, stuff like that, the Sweden, the Sweden Open, the Canada Cup Open, stuff like that. I went to those tournaments mm -hmm. and I ended up winning those as well. I was very successful on the international scene. And then, um, you know, I couldn't wrestle anymore. So took a few years off and then um, I was just like working a regular job. I was doing um, dog training at the time. And then um, someone invited me to uh, MMA gym and uh, they were like, yeah, do you want to, do you know any girls that want to do MMA? And I was like, yeah, me. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, and they're like, cool. All right, come on by. So I went to the gym and it's still the gym that I go to now, which is crazy. Because no one ever stays at the same gym they, they start off at, you know. Very true, yeah. I feel like a lot of people change. They're like, oh, this gym's just not going to get me to the next level. But, um, you know, I've stayed confident in my coaches. I've stayed confident in their ability to get me to where I need to be. And, you know, here I am today. And it's so funny that you mentioned the dog thing because I was scrolling through social media, just searching your name and seeing what I would pop up. And I found a video with you and you were like shadow boxing when you were like walking dogs at the same time or something like that. And I was, I just wondered like, where did your love for animals stem from? Like, was that something that you've carried throughout your whole life or was that something you found more so when you couldn't wrestle? No, um, that's funny that you say that because they just had to ask me that today. No, I've like loved dogs since I was a kid. I remember being a young kid and I had this dog. His name was Dodger. And um, I was teaching him how to like do tricks and like go under the go under this like little chair and then jump on the chair and then do sit and down. Like I was training this dog and I was like 10 years old. Like I didn't know what I was doing. I just like I just felt like. I don't know. He was a smart dog. He learned really quickly, and like he, we loved each other. Sad thing, horrible. And he ended up getting parvo. At the time, we didn't know what parvo was. Yeah. He ended up passing away, and I was like heartbroken. Like that was like my dog. Like still to this day, I'll never forget that dog. But um, yeah. And then as I got older, you know, I knew I wanted to be around animals. I've always loved animals. I remember being a kid saying I wanted to either be a veterinarian or like a marine biologist, working with sea animals and stuff like that. Um, but, um, yeah, I started doing dog training and, um, I was a dog trainer at PetSmart, Petco, Petco Unleashed. And, um, once I got to the UFC, I stopped doing the dog training. My boyfriend, he actually does dog training for a living. So it's mm -hmm. really weird how we're both like dog trainers and fighters at the same time. Like, it's like really weird combo. Like we met at the gym and then he was like, oh yeah, like 
what do you like to do outside of you know fighting and i was like dog training he's like no way i do that too and i was like what that's pretty weird like who who how you know it was really weird and um just like a weird coincidence and so now he has his own business and because you know i'm in the ufc i you know i'm um it's easier for me to just fight because i have the income um i'm helping him with his business and stuff like that so it's been great so we, now like i can help him um with his business while he tries to make it to the ufc too so it's pretty cool do you uh, st still train any dogs these days from time to time or um i help i help him with the dogs yeah i don't really like um seek out like clientele and stuff like that usually like they'll be like hey do you train the dog and i'll be like yeah my boyfriend does and like i just like give it to him you know like and it's good because like um, I can help him get more clientele as well. All right, that's cool. So let's get into some fight questions now. My okay. first, my first fight question to you is: um, When I do these interviews, I like to take it a step further back than most people do. And um, I've seen that there was a fight that you had against Elizabeth Rodriguez. It was an amateur fight, and it was um, Mansion Fights fourteen. And I've seen that title of that promotion. How did you find that? I seen that title of that promotion and it just interests me right away. So tell me what, uh, what going into that fight was like and, uh, what you remember from that. That was so long ago. I'm not exactly sure what I remember. <laughs> it's 2014. I remember, yeah. I just remember winning and being happy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's short and sweet. I was um, like, yeah, I knew I was going to beat her. In my head, you know, like obviously in my head, I wasn't like saying that a lot. I was just like thinking, like, yeah, I knew I could do it. You know, I knew I could win. So. But do you remember like um what level of training you were at like um at that so, part like oh, well I'm as, like jujitsu wise jujitsu oh. wise like do you remember like your belt level at that time or anything white like belt. that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it's it's different when you're a white belt because of your wrestling pedigree. So I'm sure you could probably dominate like other white belts at that time. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But still, I was I didn't know anything. Yeah, <laughs> I just was so green. Like I was like, okay, like it's still to this day, I look back, I'm like, oh my god, <laughs> what the heck was this? <laughs> And that's, uh, that leads me into a question about um, still another early part of your career, which would be the ultimate fighter. Now, I had Roxanne Modafari on as the first guest of this show. And oh. I asked her a question that I want to ask you as well, because I want to get your thoughts on it. Um, she um, thought more like me on the, on the topic, but... Um, do you care that the ultimate fighter, like the fights in the house don't count towards your professional record? Like, do, does that ever cross your mind at all or does it not matter to you? I mean, it really doesn't matter, but a lot of people are like, she's only had two fights. And I'm like, come on. I've had more than that, you know? It's like, just like, people are just like, that's trying to downplay my like success. And I'm just like, okay, whatever, you know? But um, I don't really care. Like, you know, going in there, I'm not going to be like thinking in there in the cage, like, um, I'm only seven and oh, I'm not going to be thinking that, you know, I'm going to think, but, um, I mean, it doesn't really matter to me. Like I said, it doesn't matter, but it would be nice to have a couple wins on there. So, you know, like and, that. um, also, so going into the fight with Nina, I know you're not, um, a fighter that tends to game plan directly for uh, an opponent. You like to just work on all of your skills. Um, mm -hmm. and just see where you are in there. But, um, I mean, you do tend to just, you know, usually shoot like it's a natural thing for you. So um, do you have a way you see this fight playing out differently? Or Because a lot of fans always wonder, like, I wonder if Tatiana is going to just surprise us one day and, like, show us some wild striking ability or something like that. But um, do you think that this might be a fight where that could happen? Or do you just see it stay in the course uh, using your old, your mauling tactics? <laughs> you know, I just don't ever know in there, you know, um, I really, this depends on like what's presented. Like people are always like, oh, she has no stand up. And it's like, well, cause like no one's ever stopped my shots or, you know what I mean? So if she decides like, she just, you know, like has really good defense and it's really hard for me to take her down. Um, cause it's not strictly wrestling, you know, it's MMA wrestling. This is completely different. MMA wrestling is so much more difficult than like 
in, in, in other aspects uh, than regular wrestling. Like regular wrestling, you can shit suit, you can set shots up with your like hands, and you're both in a sh- in a in a lower position, so it's easier to shoot and spring off of your you know spring off your feet. Um, but it's a little different when you're standing straight up. And someone's trying to kick you and punch you and knee you in your face, you know? So, um, so yeah, I mean, if she's able to, like, um, defend my takedowns, then I'm going to have to improvise. I'm not going to just sit there and, like, keep shooting and shooting, like, over and over and over again. Like, not take, not throw a strike, you know? Um, so, yeah, I mean, if that happens, then that happens. But um, I'm always going to go towards what's, what's natural for me. And that's, that's my wrestling, you know? I, I cannot help it. Like... Sometimes they're like, okay, just stay on your feet. And all of a sudden, I'm like catching a kick and sweeping someone on their head. I'm like, oh, <laughs> my bad. <laughs> yeah. um, so. And as far as the matchup goes, um, I know you don't take any opponents lightly, but do you ever pay attention to what fans are saying like online? Or like, do you see what people say when it uh in regards to you and the division because most people consider you the uncrowned champion and have probably your last two or three fights yeah i mean i see it but i'm just like that doesn't really matter you know i gotta prove it out there so that's what matters to me the most like i don't know like i am i'm very i'm you know i'm i come across like very confident because i'm very confident in myself because you know, my mom's never, you know, my, that's how I was raised, you know, we're a product of our, our parents. And uh, my mom definitely raised me to be confident and to believe in myself. And my brother, um, you know, he was just taught me to be super confident and believe in myself and to know that I worked hard and to remember the hard work that I put in. And then like, oh, like if people could feel what I feel, like they would they just they would understand me so much more you know like i i put everything all my emotions into the sport like everything that i have and i i constantly think about it and i give up so so much of just like you know being carefree because i just think about it and it's so it's so passionate it's such a big huge passion of mine if they knew how much i loved it they wouldn't be like oh she needs some humility they would just know that's just me like I love it and I just want to win so badly and it's not be- me being arrogant it's me just feeling like you know I've worked so hard my entire life I remember all those days that you know um during high school when everybody else was eating and I was out there running because I wanted to be a champion you know I remember those days I remember where I came from I remember the hard workouts when I was younger I remember now when I work out like I sit there and I'm doing a long run and I just think about getting my hand raised and, and feeling that moment again, you know? So, um, you know, for me, I'm just trying to stay humble. And, um, you know, a lot of people are like, you're the, you're the champ, you're the next champ, you're going to be the champ forever. And just like all this stuff. And I'm just like, you know, like I'm trying to stay true to who I am, be the humble person. My mom, my mom and my parents have taught my, my brother has taught me to be, and, you know, but still have that hunger even when I'm at the top, you know, and, and still remember where I came from. Remember that hungry feeling of wanting to be the champion. Which is pretty much a champion's mindset if you think about it. So, I mean, <laughs> the fans are kind of right because you have, it's almost uh, the same mentality as Khabib as well, where it's like you guys are pretty humble and you guys are just grinders. You work really hard and the style similar inside the cage too. So it's like, I don't know, you guys really draw a lot of parallels to each other that fans recognize. But um, yeah, yeah. And I also don't talk a lot either. Which that's something like him as well. (laughs) Yeah, I don't like that. I don't like it because you could sit there and say, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. But you got to back it up. You know, it sounds stupid. Like it's all cliche, like you got to walk the walk. But it's true. (laughs) You know, it's like, I could be like, I can run 20 miles, but I can only run three or something, you know? Me. <laughs> <laughs> Me. Um, do you think the UFC understands um, exactly how good of a wrestler you are? No. I don't think they understand it either. No. <laughs> I don't think they understand it. It may take like one or two more fights, but I think yeah. soon enough when they finally understand it, uh, the marketing will probably go through the roof. But my question to you is when you actually, when you're in the fight 
that's you're in the cage and you're you have your opponent and you actually grab onto them for the first time like do you feel like it's like a cheat code like in a video game like do you think it's just over from the time you get them or like is this mm. something in your head yeah like sometimes like i'll grab a hold of somebody and i'm like oh man the difference in strength is just like you know i could feel that um with the the opponents that I've had so far. I remember Viviani though. Now that little bull, <laughs> she held on to my my jaw. I almost like still to this day my jaw hurts. <laughs> like that girl, you know, I think she's like the Sakuri, which is like a snake. Mm -hmm. Man, I could understand. She almost broke. I think she probably did break my jaw. I just don't she know. Might have. You should get that checked out. <laughs> like, I did. They're like, oh, it's just a really, really bad sprain. I'm like, a sprain? God, it's been over a year. It's been two years now. <laughs> I was like, this is something wrong. But um, but yeah, no, I mean she was she was strong. But I just think, you know, these girls can be strong. I I face a lot of girls now that are strong. I face a lot of guys that are strong. Um, but the just the difference is the experience in terms of the wrestling, you know. I think I'll grapple with people and they'll be heavier than me and um I'll do, you know, I'll I'll grapple them because not based on just because I'm strong, but because my my leverage and my technique and um, and my leverage does help. I have long arms, yeah. <laughs> so like sometimes like I'll be like under one leg and then under their back and under their arm and they're like, "Are you serious?" I'm like, <laughs> "I don't know. I don't know how they did this." <laughs> 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 but um, you know, I think the same goes for Kamaru. Like he's so long and lanky and. I think that's why his wrestling really transferred over well uh, to MMA. I think you see like a lot of, there's a lot of wrestlers that don't always transfer over really well to MMA um, because, you know, everybody's different in terms of like their wrestling style. I think specifically my style of wrestling transferred over well to MMA. And what do you think that key is, uh, the key for you as far as coming from a strict wrestling background to um, mixing in your MMA and wrestling together? Um, just, you know, always trying to evolve, you know, um, be adapt. You know, I think there's a lot of things like in jiu-jitsu that you could do better than, you know, the techniques that you could do better in terms of MMA than the wrestling aspect. You know, I whenever I go with like a, a, a wrestler as well like we'll both we'll start like wrestling each other and like it's really funny because then like i'll do like a jujitsu move and they're like wait what was that and then I'm, like, <laughs> I'm like ha <laughs> and they're like dang that was good but like it'll be like we're grappling you know so they're like huh that's weird like because you know i've adapted and these are usually like guys that are just like strictly wrestlers that just started doing like i'm like jujitsu and they're like man that was good and i'm like yeah i've been doing it a while <laughs> But it just, but, you know, I'm always trying to, like, go into practice, learn something new, and try to be open-minded, I think. Like, always be open-minded. And, and not everything, like, what works for me might not work for him, but what works for him might not work for me. So I always have to try to, like, you know, figure things out and kind of put it in my game as well. So I think I'm, all, I'm very, um, I'm always receptive, you know, like, uh, I'm very hard on myself too. So like if I have a bad practice, like I think about things that I need to do or, you know, uh, but my coach is like, you're crazy. You did great. I'm like, oh my God, I was, I was two seconds behind. He's like, yeah, yeah, beat him up here. I'm like, yeah. I'm like, it doesn't matter. Like I know, you know, I know what I should have done out there. So that's how I kind of felt like in the Carla fight. Like I felt like I got so hungry to hit her in the face that I missed a lot of opportunities. And so, like, when I said, like, it wasn't my best performance, people thought, like, I was being, like, arrogant, like, you know, but I was like, no, I know what I'm capable of. I, I see myself train every day. I know the moves I that I do, you know, and I feel like I could have been, it could have been even more dominant than I had displayed. So seeing all that uh, training, I mean, seeing where you're at uh, performance-wise in your head, um, I know once you beat Nina, uh, you're probably going to want maybe another fight or the title shot. A lot of people think you deserve it now already. But um, a lot of fans, if you search, are actually looking beyond that point and are looking at maybe 
double champ status for you. Did you ever think about that ever, uh, moving up to flyweight and seeing what you would be able to do there? Yeah. The, yeah, I was going to say, people think already that your size and length and strength already translates to flyweight. So I just yeah. didn't know if that was something you thought about. Yeah, I definitely think that that's something I could I could do. You know, I think if I put on some more muscle, like, you know, I, I don't really like looking that big, but hey. If I ha if it if it's looking a little thick and being a flyweight and getting another belt, I'll do it. You know? <laughs> <Guns up. laughs> I like being, you know, lean, you know, but like sometimes I look at myself like at like when I get down to one fifteen and I'm like Skeletor, you know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we got th we got three more questions for you. Okay. All right. Number one, who is the best wrestler that trains at Millennia? Best wrestler? Yeah, best wrestler. Besides me? <laughs> yeah, and, and also, I have another question besides you, because we heard in that one interview you did before, I think it was a post-fight interview where you said you took down Lorenz Larkin. Yeah. And yeah. I know he like denied that, but what's like the story behind it? Do you remember the moment when it happened? Yeah, it was funny. So <laughs> I'll tell you. So we were wrestling, and I'm pretty sure I've taken him down more times than once. So just saying. Uh, yeah. But <laughs> but he like he's always like, oh, you you're so lucky. I'm you, I'm not a girl. I'm like you're lucky you're not a girl. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I would you would never you would man you'd be in. You'd be in, I don't know where you'd be, <laughs> lowly. And you just, we just talk smack to each other all the time. But I remember the one time, the one time specifically that we were doing, he went and like he tried to take me down, but I pushed him off and like I like circled and he had me kind of against the cage and he went like super, like to kind of like really grab me and uh -huh. just ducked over like, mm, and he like, <laughs> flew over me and he was like, whoa. And his legs <laughs> went over me. I just pushed him over. And then he was like, oh, my God, if you wouldn't have caught me, I would have ate it. And I was just like, dude. Oh, wow. I was like, dang, two left feet. And he still tries to deny it. But the story yeah. is out now. <laughs> Man, I wish we would have had cameras back then. Me we too. We wouldn't have been old, too. <laughs> and um, it was funny. Yeah, I can imagine. <laughs> uh, who do you think is the best amateur prospect at Millennia right now that you could see, like, making it to the UFC, making a name for themselves? Oh man, we have some good guys right now. Actually, um, I would say maybe like Alex Cruz. He's he's good. Um, we have a, a bunch of guys though right now that are winning and doing really well. But I think he's one of them. He's a wrestler, and he just kind of, you know, uh, he you know get a little more experience. I think he could do well in the sport. All right, and then the last question is one that I asked to. You everybody that I interview. Now, I don't know how the Tough House works, but I know you did get a performance bonus when you were there. Is that the same um, payout as like the UFC one when you get it like on a real UFC card? Is it like the 50 I don't pick? remember. I don't, I didn't, I didn't get one. Oh, you didn't? Although oh, okay. I did finish everybody. That's what I was going to say. When I Just looked it up, it saying. said you had, <laughs> when I looked it up, it said you had one. But, oh, really? Yeah. Is that it um, didn't swell then my check didn't represent <laughs> it. <laughs> Cause I was like, what's this crazy little thing? <laughs> so actually that's funny. Cause I got the check and I was like, I have to train off of this. Like, cause I was gonna quit my job and I was like, Oh, that's kinda close, you know? So then um I ended up meeting this this people and these people and this guy, he was a contractor and the the contracting thing was called Cal State Contracting, I think it was. Mm -hmm. Pretty sure. Contracting. Contractor. And they do, you know, like the energy saving windows and the solar and yeah. the just basically energy saving contracting stuff. Um, mm -hmm. And he was like, hey, you know what? I'll give you $1,000 a month until your fight. Did you do it? <laughs> yeah. I didn't even do anything. All I did was one post. And he was like, yeah. Wow. Jeez, yeah. that's easy. 
Yeah, he, <laughs> I did one post for like, and and then and he helped me out like that. Like he just like, I just want to help you out because I believe in you. Wow, that's incredible. Yeah, and <laughs> still to this day, he's like, oh, you know, um, I have a house in Cancun. If you ever want to go, you can go. I'm like, God, wow, thanks. That's incredible. Yeah. <laughs> so he's before we get out here. Guy. Yeah, he seems like it. <laughs> before we get out of here, any uh, sponsors, friends, coaches you want to thank? All my friends, all my coaches, everybody that supports me. Thank you very much. All my teammates. I wouldn't be able to do without you. Um, you let me beat you out, beat you up, choke you out. You guys are great. I love you guys. I swear, they're like, like for 30 minutes, I'll be doing my chokes and stuff. And they're just sitting there like, all right. I'm like, I know this can't be fun. I know uh, I wouldn't like it. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm like, thank you. You know, like, I don't think they understand, like, how much it really means to me. Like, I mean, I tell them, but I don't think they under. You know, they, like. They're like, she has to say that. I just, she just let me choke her, but it really means a lot, you know? Cause it's like, man, you're taking your time out of your day, get choked out all the time for me, you know? You know, it's just like, man, that's, that's super selfless. So I'm very grateful for that. And then um, my boyfriend helps me out, who works with me and stuff like that. And he's always helping me with everything. And um, he's amazing. And uh, who else, who else? What sponsors do I have right now? Oh, so the nutritionist from um, the UFC Performance Institute is really helping me out. Uh, Clint, mm -hmm. yeah, he's really, really helping me out and sent me some stuff to help me with this weight. Um, because like I said, you know, I got really swole, so no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> So now I gotta get smaller again. I was like, no, I gotta lose my muscle. No, I don't really have that much muscle. I have like long, thin arms. But that's all right. But um, but yeah, like I remember I watched the video. Did you watch the video where Rose was like talking about how she was fighting Joanna and she was like, all I could think about was how much how shredded her shoulders looked right there. Yeah, I, I did and see I, that. And I was like, oh, I'm like no, no, that wouldn't have been me. <laughs> Oh my gosh, you're the funniest fighter. You're the funniest fighter. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm so goofy, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, there you have it. Tatiana Suarez, good luck on your fight against Nina on June 8th. We'll talk to you next time. Thank you. I'm not surprised, motherfuckers. Unknown MMA. Everything you don't know about.